This morning, I'm going to speak on the attributes, some attributes of the Christian. Praise the Lord. I'm going to speak on the attributes of a Christian. The attribute of a child of God. When you are embarking on the journey of your destiny, what you need is courage. Courage keeps you going. Courage. You don't look at the things you see at the moment. You don't look at the things that are surrounding you. You keep moving. In other words, in life, every great man or woman, they have their challenges. In the midst of your challenges, always see victory. In the midst of your challenges, always see yourself as a conqueror. Always have this mind of, I can do all things. I can do it. Have the mind of, I can do it. Life is a journey that you walk through. Most times, when you are going for that journey, there is a lot of preparation that is needed. So in life challenges, as a child of God, never you get distracted. Sometimes, main voice may come. In the midst of their talking, see victory. Men must talk. Even dead men, they talk about dead men. But when they are talking, let their talking be a motivating force to you. Let their talking inspire you the more. Do not allow their talking to shift you from where you are. Do not allow their talking to distract you from where you are going. Because the difference between where you are going and where you are coming from is time. So with time, you will definitely get there. Again, your mindset matters when you are embarking on the journey of your destiny. Some people are in the ministry of talking. Let them do the talking. In the midst of their talking, you are going higher. In the midst of their talking, you are moving to the next level. In the midst of their talking, God is pioneering you to your destiny. So, child of God, life challenges must always come. But what are you saying at the moment is what matters. What are you saying to yourself at that at every given moment matters. When the woman met Elijah, the son was dead. But when the man of God asked her, she said, it is well. Child of God, I want you to understand something. In the storm of life, God is dead. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what is happening to you. What God cannot do does not exist. Every day of your life, God has destined you for greatness. Every day of your life, God has destined you for something great. 
Whether you are born with a silver spoon or not, the most important thing is that you have a destination. So what keeps you going in life, child of God, is the courage. Courage is the ability to face danger. The day your parents gave back to you, God is aware of what you will be and what you will become in life. It only matters your mindset, you thinking positive. You are in charge of your world. You are in control of your world. It all depends on the way you handle it. It all depends on the way you work it out. Your destiny is in your hands. Your life is in the hand of God. So child of God, whatever you are seeing for the now, cannot kill you. Whatever you are going through, you will survive it. Always have this mentality, no matter how dark, no matter how it is, no matter how difficult it is, I will survive it. Every child of God, they don't live by men's budgets. They don't live by the economy. They live by God's budgets. Whether there is inflation or not. No, 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 no. They are not downcast. But they live by God's budgets. Praise the Lord. So this morning, number one attribute is faith. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to the book of Hebrew 11. Hebrew 11 1. Hebrew 11 1. Media, please. Are you there? Hebrew 11 1. Say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hope for. You hope for it. You are optimistic. When you have faith, when the man of God is ministry, you connect to it with your faith. You stay connected with your faith. When you have faith, you don't go to different places in search of solution. Your faith, you activate your faith. You put your faith at work. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And another thing you should understand, the anointing you respect works for you. The grace you believe works for you. So that faith, that belief, that confidence that you have makes it work. The Bible told me in the book of Luke, the story of the woman with issue of blood in the book of Luke chapter 8, 43 to, 40, 40, 43 to 48. The Bible told me that the woman was having an issue of blood for so many years. And the woman was having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physician, neither could be healed of any. The Bible said that this woman has spent all that she has. In fact, she's tired. She don't even know where to start from. She is confused. She don't even understand the game. The life of every woman is in his blood. What keeps a man going is the blood. The Bible said that the woman was passing through for 12 years. For you to see how difficult, how serious the problem is. Problems will come. The problem 
Let the problem reshape your destiny. When the problem comes, let the problem bring out the best in you. Most times, that problem will be there. Look, you see gold. When gold, people that are, that are into gold smiths, before the gold will come out that we admire so much, it passes through fire. The kind of fire, the kind of heat that God passes through, in fact, the flame is too much. So what am I saying this morning, child of God? Problems will come, child of God. But do not allow that problem to weigh you down. In the midst of that problem, God is able to see you through. Whatever the problem is, God is capable to see you through. The Bible told me that the woman connected with her face. She was having this belief. She was having this mentality that I'm, as soon as I meet this Jesus, I've been hearing so much about this Jesus. They have been telling me a lot of things about this Jesus. I need to meet this Jesus they are talking about. The Bible told me because she connected with her faith, because she believed with all her heart. The Bible said immediately she touched Jesus. She was healed. Then Jesus was like, who touched me? Somebody touched me. Ah, the disciples say, ah, you are asking of who touched you? When there's a, a lot of crowd in this place. He said, no, somebody touched me. There was a supernatural touch in the life of the woman. The supernatural touch of Jesus changed everything about her. The supernatural touch of this Jesus changed her perspective. The supernatural touch of this Jesus changed her destiny, changed her entire life. The Bible says instantly she was healed. Faith. It is not that mentality. They will say, it is happening in Adwawa. You start running. You start running. Hey, there is something happening there. It's happening in Obahi. You start running. No, 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 no. A child of God that has faith, you are there. You stay there. You are there. You connect to it. You connect, you cue to it. Praise the Lord. You understand that the basic thing that you need to do at that moment is your faith. Your faith can move mountains. Your faith can turn situations that are down to become, to be a real, a, a, a real one that will emerge God glorifying himself through it with your faith. Praise the Lord. So child of God, faith in God is very, very important. Look at the story of Abraham. The Bible told me that Abraham at a certain time in his life, at a certain point, the Bible says Abraham was contemplating. Say, oh, what is happening to me? Oh, God. The Bible told me that he was scared. He was, he, he was afraid that he's going to die child, uh, childlessly. He's going to die without a child. But the Bible told me that God called Abraham. And what did I love about Abraham? He never argued with God. Every instruction that God gave him, he walked with his instructions. He never argued with God. He staggered not. He was scared. Oh, am I going to die childlessly? What is happening to me? The Bible said, So, hear me. Start now. Start counting the stars of the sky. After counting, start counting the sand. In the eyes of man, it's not possible. Then we are serving a God of possibility. Say, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing, 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 nothing. God said, start counting the sand. After counting, uh, start counting the stars. After counting the stars, you count the sand. How many sand can he count? How many stars can he count? He counts. And today, the Abraham have a lot of descendants. 
That was what God told him to wipe away the fear in the life of, in his life. Child of God, what am I saying this morning? Oh, I don't have a child. Child of God is your mindset. Your word told me, neither shall there, neither will there be barren in thy land. God, I am not barren. I am waiting. I am fruitful. I'm not barren. I'm fruitful. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Yes, in the time of your waiting, it may not be easy. A lot of pressures will come. Pressures will come. Maybe family pressures will come. Maybe fr uh, pressures from friends may come. Mm -mm, don't mind them all. Just be focused. There is something I love in the life of Joseph. Joseph was focused. Even when he told his brothers his dream. They said, look at this one. Where is it coming from? Where is he emanating from? Eh? But what happened? In Genesis 37. In Genesis 37. The father loved him. They look at him, they say, look at this man. Look at this man. Where is he coming from? The same Joseph was the only person that could interpret the prisoner's dream in Genesis 40. In Genesis 41, he was the only person that could interpret uh, uh, just, um, um, Pharaoh's dream and the prisoner's dream. He was focused. He was not distracted. The brothers were saying all manner of things they were saying. That was not his concern. Because he knew, he knew where he was heading to. So child of God, if you know your words in the journey of destiny, don't easily give up. Great men, they don't give up. Great men, they don't see failure, they see victory. Great men, they don't, they don't, they don't they, uh, uh, great men, they don't see being downcast. They see upliftments. Say, so let the weak say, I'm strong. In your trying times, be courageous. In your trying times, don't easily give up. In your trying times, don't listen to the voice of men. Most times when you listen to the voice of men, it will weigh you down. Don't complain. Whatever you are going through in life is for the moment. It's a phrase. You will get over it. With time, you come out. So your own time is not God's time. So in other words, child of God, if you are looking for the fruit of the womb, wait for God. He said, for he make all things beautiful in his own time, not your time. In his own time. So God can never be late. But in the eyes of men, we look at it that it's being delayed. But God cannot be late. So Abraham waited patiently for God. And today, his descendants, they are, so, they are numerous, they are much. When God told him, carry your son, go and sacrifice it, he it was moving. Ah, if it's me and you, God, the only this son that you gave me, you say, make I go carry him, you to God, sacrifice to do what? Ah, no, it cannot be possible. But because he had the confidence in God. So when you are working with God, what God needs at the moment is your courage, your trust, and your belief. Don't doubt. Don't wave. Your trust is so much important at the moment when you are working with God. Never you doubt, no matter how it is. Is it that you are not married? Wait! Don't allow the pressures of men to, it will not make you, you will not make mistake. You are looking for the fruit of the womb. Wait! I know it may not be easy. You are looking for a job. Wait! So what is now, 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 now? Look, child of God, all that glitters are not gold. You must wait for your time. Sometimes you see people, so you want to leave, you say, ah, See my mates, see my mates. Look, forget it. Not by your mates. Everybody has his own destiny. You need to wait. Don't allow 
what you are seeing at the moment. Oh, I want to ride a car. I want to build a house. Everything has its time. Great men that you see today, if they tell you what they go through to get to the top, you will not believe it. When problem comes, it becomes an instrument. See that problem as an instrument for God to take you to the ladder of your success. When that problem comes, all of them are part of the flavor that add value to your glory tomorrow. When that problem comes, all of them are part of the ingredients that make it that, that makes your life more meaningful. All of them are part of the ingredients that reshapes your destiny. Don't allow the problem to weigh you down. When problem comes in your trying times, always have the confidence that God is able to see you through. Don't be carried away. Stay focused. Stay connected. And hold on to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The story of the blind Bartimaeus too. In the book of Mark 10, 46 to 52, the story of the blind Bartimaeus. Then point two. Prayer. Praise the Lord. Another attribute is prayer. Amen. Prayer. Give me your time to pray and matters a lot. Let prayer be part of you. Let prayer be part and parcel of your life. If I let your life be smelling prayer. Everything about your life. One thing about prayer, prayer changes things. What is prayer? Prayer is the act of communicate, communicating to God. Communion with God. Fellowship with God. The strength of every believer lies in the prayer. The powerhouse, the angel room is prayer. Prayer brings breakthroughs. Prayer unlocks doors. With prayers, when you pray, there is a way you pray. Begin to open your eyes and begin to show you where the strongholds of the enemy lies. Make a time for prayer. Sometimes it's good to rest, it's good to sleep. But don't sleep and sleep that even when somebody will come up, in fact, somebody will come, climb, go, pour water, you don't wake up. No, my dear, no, 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 no. So as a child of God, you must be prayerful. Praise the Lord. Prayerful. You must be praying at all times. The Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says pray without ceasing. In good times, prayer is needed. Whether things are okay, you pray. Whether things are not working, you pray. But you still keep praying. You still keep praying. Praise the Lord. Why do we need to pray? Why is it important for you to pray as a child of God? Number one, the reason why it's important, when you pray, God begins to increase your spiritual sensitivity. Anytime you pray, God will begin to increase. There is an increase on your spiritual sensitivity. Spiritual, your alerts, God will begin to increase it. It will begin to multiply it anytime you pray. It will begin to open your eyes and begin to show you things that you need to know. Praise the Lord. Why is it important to pray? Number two, you will have fresh ideas from the Holy Spirit. Ideas, inspirations, they begin to call. That's why prayer is important. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then, three, the reason why you need to pray, the Lord will increase your anointing. 
there is an increase. You begin to increase your anointing as you pray. Praise the Lord. Then the fourth one, he will begin to increase your spiritual design needs. When you pray, there are some things that will come. The Spirit of God will begin to minister to you. This thing, is it from God? Even when you pray, you seek the direction of God. You know when God is talking to you, when the Spirit of God is ministering to you. Maybe when you want to embark on a journey, you know when the Spirit of God is telling you, my daughter, do it this way. My daughter, take this way. So you begin to design, you begin to know whether this thing, is it from God or not. You already understand, you already know how God ministers to you, how God talks to you. So by the time you pray, He will begin to give you spiritual designments. Even when things are happening, He will begin to show you whether it is real or not real, whether the thing is fake or not. That is, you begin to, you, you, you begin to see another, another, another revelation entirely. That design, you begin to know whether this is coming from God or is not coming from God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Have you gotten the fourth point? Then the, the, the last one, you will be able to overcome your fears and intimidation. Praise the Lord. You'll be able to overcome your fears and intimidation. Psalm 5 3. First Peter 4 7. Psalm 55 17. First Peter 3 12. Then point three. The third attribute. Studying the word of God. Praise the Lord. So you must always study the word of God. Second Timothy 2 15. You don't read the word of God like a magazine. You don't read the word of God as if you are reading newspaper. You don't read the word of God as if you are reading a novel. You study the word of God. You meditate. Joshua 1 8. Okay, let's take the first scripture. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. In God's word, there is life. In God's word, there is freedom. In God's word, there is liberation. The word of God should always be your base. The word of God is the bridge between where you are going and where you are coming from. The word of God should be the diameter of your life. In Joshua 1 8, he said, Meditate in this word of God. Child of God, say, The book of law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. If you want to succeed in the journey of your destiny, you need the world. You need promotion. You need good health. The world. If you want your way to be prosperous, you need the world. You draw strength from the word of God. You hold on to the promises of God. In the turbulent of the shadow, the word of God is needed. The word of God is life. If you want to make it in the journey of your life, the word is very very important it's very vital it's necessary make time to study the word of god when you study the word of god god begin to unfold his plans concerning your life when you look at the word of god god begin to 
show you things beyond the realm of the extraordinary. It takes you from the realm where you are to another realm entirely. When you study the word of God, look, one thing is that the amount of the word of God is so needed in your life. So as a child of God, always make time to study the word. There are some battles you are going through. It is the word of God that you need at the moment to strengthen you. There are some situations you are going through. The word of God is needed at that time for an answer. So child of God, always make time to study the word of God. Praise the Lord. Psalm 19, 7 to 11. 2 Timothy 3, 15. Colossians 2, 8. Take note of those scriptures. Praise the Lord. The fourth point. Forgive. The fourth point, forgive. Colossians 3.13. Media, please. Colossians 3.13. For bearing one another, at the fourth point, forgiveness is needed. For bearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Is it your husband that offend you? You must learn to forgive. Sometimes, you see, there are some things that happens. You start keeping record. Maybe an issue just takes place in the house. You start remembering what happened even when you gave birth to your first child. That's not the spirit of a child of God. Something that happened maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, is just there. That's not the spirit of a child of God. Your husband offend you, you must forgive. Your brother offend you, you must forgive. The Bible says, let brotherly love continue. Look beyond the person's mistake. Sometimes we are human beings, we make mistakes. We make errors. Sometimes we make mistakes. Look beyond the person's mistake. Dialogue. Forgiveness matters a lot. Whether it's your children and offend you, stop taking, stop keeping record of something that happens 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 7 years ago, 5 years ago. All those things are not needed. You must learn to forgive as a child of God. Irrespective of whoever that offends you. Whether it's Mama and Techi that offend you, forgive. Whether it's Mama Eliza that offend you, forgive. Whether it's Mama Osasu that offend you, forgive. In the book of Philippians 2.5, what did he say? He said, let this mind, media please, let this mind, let this mind be in you. Which is also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2.5, let's see. Say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Which mind is he talking about? Mind of forgiveness. Which mind is he talking about? Mind of kindness. Which mind is he talking about? Mind of compassion. Not the mind of hatred. Not the mind of malice. Somebody offend you. You don't talk to your tent or Israel. You are in the same house. That your neighbor that is living with you. How is your relationship with that woman? How is your relationship with that man? We are talking about the attributes of a Christian. You should understand that your life should be a mirror. Your life is the Bible that unbelievers are reading. They are watching you. They are watching your steps. They are watching your character. They are watching the way you talk. They are watching you. How do people 
God knows you in that your business premises? What identity do they used to know you? Do they know you as a quarrelsome person? Do they know you as somebody that keep malice? We are talking about the mind. They say, let this mind, this mind. Not the mind of wickedness. When people are living with you, how do you treat them? We are talking about the mind. The mind is the center of every human being. When people are living with you, how do you treat them? Sometimes, there are things that happens in the home. Who we'll give them the housework to do? They are doing the housework. Oh. In the process that you think that you are punishing them, you are helping their destiny. There is a young girl I know. She's living with somebody. The house get hardly rest. She hardly sleep. But there is something I discover. When she makes soup, oh my God, she makes it well. In the process that the madam is doing to punish her, she will not go to school on time. Oh my God. That is somebody's destiny. That is somebody. Sometimes there are some problems that people go through. They are the architect of their own problem. They are the architect of their own misfortune. It's not as if God does not answer prayer. It's not as if God is far from us. God is there with us. But because of the kind of lifestyle, because of the kind of character, they exhibit towards people. That is war where their problem is coming from. How can you say that you are a Christian? How can you say that you, 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 you are a Christian? Somebody's child, instead of she or he to be sleeping, at the middle of night, you send he or she to go and be walking. And why you are sleeping? The work is good. Let her rest. Let her sleep. She's a human being like you. Don't treat them as if they are nobody. Don't treat them like slaves. Because sometimes there are people in life that are going through what they are going through. It is not a sin that God does not answer prayer. It is as a result of the way they are treating people. That is where their problem is coming from. Sometimes they will think that it is which. Oh, it is generational battle. It is generational problem. Far from it. It may not be generational battle. Sometimes it may be. It may not be inherited battle. But the problem is from them. Because that child will be crying. That child, whenever she, she remember what is happening, Simply because the father or the mother gave the, gave the child for you doesn't mean that you have to treat the child as if she's nobody. Child of God, nobody knows tomorrow. Nobody knows tomorrow. So be very careful of the way you treat people. If you cannot take care of them, free them, let them go. Witch, don't pull her from my matter. It is no witch. Child of God, check your life. Maybe there is something, there is something that you are doing that is not really working well. There are some mistakes you are making in the process of where you think you are giving the girl all the work to work. You, you think maybe you are punishing her. You are not even punishing her. You are even helping her. She will know how to wash. She will know how to cook. She will know how to do everything in the house. By the time she gets married, she becomes a better person to the husband. As you are doing that, carry your children along. The way you treat people matters. That child is a destiny. The father there in your house does not mean you have to treat them anyhow. Treat them like your own children. There is something that I've noticed. Every destiny carriers, they are loaded. You can't cover them. It may only take time. Because that person that is living with you, you don't even know what tomorrow holds. 
that was what happened to the life of Joseph. They never knew that Joseph would become governor. They never knew that they were in turn. The brothers were in turn. They would come back to come and look for him. But they felt that he was nobody. Who is he? Who is he? He's nobody. In fact, they looked down on him with disdain. But later on, he was now the one that helped them. So, child of God, have good mind towards people. When people are working for you, how do you treat them? When they work for you, do you pay them? A young boy, a young girl that served you seven years, he will go without settlements. He's wrong. Don't be part of that. They may not say anything. They may not answer you. But it's a destiny in crime. It's wrong. But when it was time for you to settle them, you start telling them stories. It's very, very, very important. So, child of God, let us have a good mind. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Then the final point, anger. Anger. As a child, as a Christian, you need to control your anger. Some people, when they are angry, my God, is a thief, eh? Hey, hey. When they are angry, they can even throw their food away. What happened to Moses? What made Moses not to enter the promised land? It was anger. God said, use the rod to touch. He used anger to do it. He only saw it. He never entered it. Control your anger. There are some anger when they start, things will go wrong. When there are some anger, when it starts burning, it's as if fire is emanating. Even when your husband is telling you, he don't do, it's okay. That is even when the anger will start. It's as if they put fuel inside fire. As a father, as a mother, you must be able to control your anger. Even when you are angry, mind the things that comes out from your mouth. Some of us, when we are angry, our mouth, eh? Oh my God! When you are angry, you say what you are not supposed to say. When you are angry, you don't even mind who is standing by you. When you are angry, you don't even mind whether the person is your elder, is, 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 you know, is your senior. When you are angry, you don't even get, want to know whether it's your mother, whether it's your sister. You don't even want to see anybody. It's not a good spirit. You must learn to control your anger. Excessive anger can make things to go wrong. Even when you are angry, somebody cannot even hold you. Even when they are holding you, it, now that time, the thing they start. It's wrong. So you must always learn to control your anger. Praise the Lord. Shower rise. Open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Tell God to help you. Tell him to help you. God help me. In the journey of my destiny. Whatever that I'm not doing right. God help me. To correct it this morning. Open your mouth and pray. Pray. You know yourself. You know who is with you. Tell God. Maybe you don't even understand that you are offending somebody living with you. Tell God to help you. There are some mistakes you might have made that you don't, you, in fact, you, are, you were carried away. Tell God to help you.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Our Father will thank you. Our Lord and our God will thank you. Lord, help us, O oh God, as we embark in the journey of our destiny. Lord, help us, O oh God, to live a good life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray one prayer point. One of the prayer you're going to pray. Oh God, my destiny help us. Let them locate me. Pray that prayer. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My destiny help us. Locate me. My destiny build us. Locate me. My destiny help us. They will not abandon me.